And now we're going to show you the nanoscope for elbow arthroscopy. First, just to get you oriented, we've got a patient here in the lateral decubitus position. This is a right elbow. Humerus is here. Shoulder would be up higher, and the forearm is hanging down. I've marked out the olecranon. This is the medial epicondyle, so obviously the ulnar nerve is here. And then here's our lateral epicondyle. For this, we're going to start with a 3.2 millimeter high flow nanoscope cannula. And you can see this comes in a straight orientation. It's also available in a curved orientation, which would allow you increased field of view so that you can rotate it as needed, similar to a standard scope. So we'll start by puncturing through the skin. I have a sharp trocar in this cannula. So I'm going to go through a trans triceps portal just to create the hole that I'm going to use as my working portal here in a moment. And then I'm going to come out and I'm going to create a posterior lateral portal. So I'm at the midpoint between the lateral epicondyle and the olecranon. I've moved up approximately one centimeter just on the lateral border of the triceps. And with this, I'm going to punch through and aim for the olecranon fossa. Now we'll insert the nanoscope. Turn our water on. And next we're going to bring our nano shaver into the trans tricep portal that I created previously. And this nanoscope saber shaver is 2.8 millimeters in diameter by 11 centimeters in length. And it's on the smaller, more ergonomic shaver handle. So as we can see, this is a relatively degenerative elbow, probably more so than the typical elbow that you'll be scoping in your practice. So there's quite a bit of chondrocalcinosis, or maybe this patient had multiple corticosteroid injections. So we're really going to put this 2.8 millimeter shaver to the test here. And you can see it's a much lighter, smaller design. So I'm able to hold it more like a pencil rather than a large blunt instrument, which gives me much more precision here. So now I'm going to turn the flow up and start to debride this chondrocalcinosis. And as you can see, despite the extensive calcinosis, it's doing an effective job at removing this tissue. So now that we've identified our chondral defect and started to prepare it, we've now applied the graft net to our suction device. So that's going to help us collect that as we continue to debride the area. So now we've cleaned a large portion of that chondral calcinosis out of the olecranon fossa. And you can see as I extend the elbow, the tip of the olecranon coming up. So I'm going to take you through just a quick diagnostic arthroscopy. Again, I'd like to point out the fact that I currently have the straight cannula on right now. So again, here's the tip of the olecranon. Olecranon fossa will travel medially. Here's the medial gutter. Currently, I'm viewing the medial gutter from across the elbow, so from a lateral portal using a straight cannula. So you can see it's a relatively wide view considering this is a straight cannula and I'm coming all the way across. If I wanted a better view, I can obviously take my curved cannula and use that, or I could come in from my trans tricep portal and simply bring that around and view here. So you can see in the screen, that would put me in the medial gutter and give me a better view if needed. Now we'll come back to the olecranon fossa and we'll show you the lateral side. Again, a little bit difficult. This is a obviously arthritic elbow. So we'll slide down, you can see the trochlea in that direction. Here we are in the soft spot headed towards the radial head. And again, I'm viewing with the straight cannula, not the angled. So here we get a nice view of the radial head. To improve that view, obviously I could use the, the angled cannula from this if needed. Now I'm gonna establish a soft spot portal. Feel for the soft spot. And then we'll create that portal without making an incision. And now I'll replace the camera. So now I'm looking at the radio head, which you can see rotate there. And I'm going to take a, a view, which is something we can't really do with a standard four millimeter scope. And I'm actually going to look across the radio capitellar joint. And I can see I can drive across this joint pretty easily and come into the front of the elbow. So now I'm actually viewing the anterior compartment of the elbow from the soft spot in the back because the smaller cannula, 2.8 millimeter cannula, allows me to drive all the way through. This can be helpful when trying to create your anterior portals. Now we can do this under needle localization rather than trying to do it blindly.
now I'm viewing from the soft spot and you can see the radio head rotating as I rotate the forearm. One of the things that's unique about the nanoscope is it will allow you to view places that you can't really see with a four millimeter scope. So here I can look in the ulna humeral joint and actually drive into this joint and see a large surface area of both the, the trochlea and the coronoid as it comes towards the back. As I back up, you'll see the radio head will come back into view here at the bottom of the screen. And I can actually drive across the radiocapitellar joint quite easily into the front of the elbow. So now I'm in the anterior aspect of the elbow. And again, I'm viewing with a straight camera here. And obviously, if you, if you wanted an even better view, you could, you could use the angled cannula. What this does is this will allow you to establish an anterior portal under needle localization rather than doing it blindly. So I'm going to take my cannulated needle here. I'm going to come up for a standard proximal anteromedial portal. So right off the medial epicondyle, up two centimeters, and approximately one to two centimeters anterior to the intermuscular septum. Come into the elbow, and now I can see that needle in the anterior joint. So this is the way that you can confirm your placement before you make an incision or start to pass any instruments. Now, this is a cannulated instrument, so I'll take the trocar out, place a small guide wire, and now I'll remove the needle, leave the guide wire in place, make a small nick in the skin. Again, this is a 1.1 millimeter guide wire, and I'm going to insert a 3.2 millimeter cannula, so I'm going to make just the smallest little nick here in the skin. And then we'll take our nanoscope cannula and insert it over the top. And now our cannula is in the front of the elbow, so I can easily remove the scope. And switch it to the front. So that's a nice, safe, and easy way to access the anterior elbow under direct and needle localization and visualization. Here I can see my trocar coming from the posterior aspect of the elbow, which you can imagine gives you a lot of opportunities to try to treat either radio head defects or capitellar defects. So now we're looking at the radio capitellar joint. I'm viewing from a proximal posterior lateral portal down into the gutter. I also have a soft spot working portal here right below it. Now I'm going to use the nano arthroscopy bone preparation instruments to demonstrate how we could prepare a capitellar OCD lesion. So I'm going to start, as you can see, I've, these instruments come straight, but I've already bent them to fit the contour of, of the needs for this patient. I'm going to come in from this soft spot portal here. And then again, these are single use instruments, so you can really get a feel and appreciation for how sharp they are. We use this to debride the remaining cartilage on this specimen. So here I'm using the cupped curette. I'll also demonstrate the ringed curette, which we've also bent using the bending tool. As you can see, very sharp edges. So this, this can be really helpful for creating a, a very sharp, well-defined border. And one of the things that I like about these instruments, they're small size, and it allows you to get in these tight spaces. And they come in 7 centimeter and 10 centimeter lengths, but it allows you to get really close to the elbow as well. So you, you can see I've got one finger on the skin, and then I'm still holding the, the instrument in my hand, which will allow me to apply quite a bit of force, but in a controlled fashion, so that way I'm not doing any unintentional damage to the elbow. But I can work effectively and efficiently to remove the cartilage and bone that I need to. And now that we use our curette to debris and prepare, we'll use the shaver to remove any final fragments. Utilize the graft net to help catch the debris. As you see, even in this difficult and arthritic elbow, still does a really good job of removing this tissue. Again, the light weight of this nano saber shaver pairs well with the small handle. And it, and it really feels very ergonomic when paired with the nanoscope. So both instruments are sort of similar size, similar weight, gives you excellent control. It feels balanced in the hand and, and lets you be very precise. And one of the benefits of having smaller instruments is it will allow you to put your portals closer together if you desire. 
So just to get a better look at this, I'm going to make an additional soft spot portal. As you can see, I can fit two soft spot portals down here without overcrowding myself. And I'm going to switch the camera to this portal. And now moving here gives me an even better look at this defect, and I still have plenty of room to get an instrument in. And now I can see the far leading edge of the defect that I've created as well. And as you can see now, I have a nice stable shoulder around the periphery of this lesion. And now that our surface is prepared, we'll inject the biocartilage. So now you can see we've prepared our biocartilage. And then we have this small nano inflow outflow cannula that we've hooked up to the syringe that will allow us precise delivery. So now I'll come in through my accessory soft spot portal and then inject our biocartilage into the defect. And next we'll use our paddle to contour it and push into place. 